Good morning, class. I am Mrs. Maria Risa Jane D. Buslon from the Junior High School Department, your mathematics teacher for today. But before we start our new lesson, let us have first a short prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. As we all know, for every plan, there is always a goal. Now, here are our lesson objectives. First, identify the different properties of the operations on integers. Next, rewrite given expressions according to the given property. And lastly, appreciate the concepts of the different properties of integers in real-life situations. As we go along in our lesson, here are some vocabularies that you should remember. First, we have integers. These are whole numbers which are either positive or negative. Next is inverse. It means the reverse version of a procedure. Next is to associate. It means to connect or join together or to combine. Next is to commute which means to travel from one's home to one's workplace or vice versa. And lastly, to distribute. It means to give shares on something or to deal out. To start with, I will be showing you two pictures. And all you have to do is to determine whether these two pictures are the same or not the same. If you think that the two pictures are the same, you have to choose a heart sign. If it is not the same, you have to choose a like sign. So let's have the first one. In the first picture, we have 4 plus 5. And in the second picture, we have 5 plus 4. So is it a hard sign or a like sign? The answer is a hard sign. So 4 plus 5 is equal to 9. And 5 plus 4 is also equals to 9. Therefore, the answer is the same. Now, let's have the second one. In the first picture, you have to wear first the socks before putting on the shoes. While on the second picture, you have to wear the shoes before putting on the socks. So, is it a hard sign or a like sign? The answer is a like sign. Apparently, wearing your socks first before putting on the shoes is definitely different from wearing the, the shoes first before putting on the socks. Now let's have the last one. In the first picture, you have to combine first milk and coffee before adding sugar. While in the second picture, you have to combine first coffee and sugar before adding milk. Is it a hard sign or a like sign? The answer is a hard sign. In the first picture, you have to combine first milk and coffee before adding sugar. While in the second picture, you have to combine first coffee and sugar before adding milk. Whether which of the three should be first combined, it will always result to the same kind of coffee. Therefore, the answer is the same. Now let's have another set of activity. It is called a show and tell game. In this activity, I will be flashing a series of pictures and all you have to do is to determine what kind of property of operations on integers is being used. And you also have to describe what is being illustrated in each set of picture. And you'll just have to choose your answer on the left side of each picture. Now let's have the first one. 
The answer is closure property. As you can see in the picture, there are three circle emojis inside the box, and they will not let the square emoji to come in. Therefore, a circle emoji added to another circle emoji is still a circle emoji. Now let's have the second one. The answer is commutative property. As you can see in the picture, a group of motorcycle riders added to a group of bicycle riders is equal to a group of bicycle riders added to a group of motorcycle riders. Now let's have the third one. The answer is associative property. As you can see in the picture, the quantity of 9 cell phones and 9 iPads plus the 4 laptops is equal to the 9 cell phones added to the quantity of 9 iPads and 4 laptops. Now let's have the next one. The answer is distributive property. As you can see in the picture, 2 times the quantity of 6 oranges and 12 strawberries is equal to 2 times 6 oranges and 2 times 12 strawberries. Now let's have the next one. The answer is identity property. As you can see in the picture, we have two apples added to no apples is equal to two apples. We have the last one. The answer is inverse property. As you can see in the picture, 14 cabbages are inside the box is added to an empty box. So, did you get the correct answers? Alright, so how did you find the activity? What are the properties being illustrated in the activity? How will you describe each property? That's what we are going to tackle for today's lesson. Are you ready to learn? Alright, so for today, we will be learning about the properties of the operations on integers. These are closure, commutative, associative, distributive, identity, and inverse. So let's have first closure property. Closure property states that the sum or product of any two integers is also an integer. Remember these keywords? Closed or belongs in a closed set. Let's have an example. Three oranges added to two oranges is equal to five oranges. An orange added to an orange will not become an apple, right? For a closure property of addition, if A and B are integers, then A plus B is also an integer. Now let's have an example. 8 plus 3 is equal to 11. 8 and 3 are integers. Therefore, 11 is also an integer. Now let's have closure property of multiplication. If A and B are integers, then A times B is also an integer. Let's have an example. 7 times 5 is equal to 35. 7 and 5 are both integers. Therefore, 35 is also an integer. Now, let's move on to the next property, the commutative property. Commutative property states that the order of addends or factors does not affect the sum or product. Remember these keywords, commute or move around. Let's say, for example, your mother gave you 20 pesos and 50 pesos on Monday, while your father gave you 50 pesos and 20 pesos on Tuesday. 20 plus 50 is equal to 70, while 50 plus 20 is also equal to 70. Therefore, whatever the order of the bills are, the result is still the same. Now let's have the commutative property of addition. If A and B are two integers, then A plus B is equal to B plus A. Let's have an example. 
4 plus 6 is equal to 6 plus 4. 4 plus 6 is equal to 10, while 6 plus 4 is equal to 10 as well. Therefore, both of them has the sum of 10. Thus, we can say that the order of the addends does not affect the result. Now, let's move on to commutative property of multiplication. If a and b are two integers, then a times b is equal to b times a. Now, let's have an example. 5 times 6 is equal to 6 times 5. 5 times 6 is equal to 30, while 6 times 5 is also equal to 30. Therefore, both of them has a product of 30. We can say that the order of the factors does not affect the result. Now, let's move on to associative property. Associative property states that the groupings of addends or factors does not affect the sum or product. Remember these keywords, association or group. Now, let's have an example. Ben and his sister went to the mall to buy some fruits. Now, Ben chooses to buy two bananas and four apples with an extra of one orange, while his sister buy four apples and one orange with an extra of two bananas. So, we have the quantity of 2 plus 4 plus 1 is equal to 2 plus the quantity of 4 plus 1. 2 plus 4 is equal to 6, plus 1 is equal to 7, while 2 plus the sum of 4 and 1, which is 5, we also have 7. Therefore, both Ben and his sister buy 7 fruits in all. Now, let's have associative property of addition. When you add, you can group the numbers in any combination and the result will be the same. So, we have the sum of a and b plus c is equal to a plus the sum of b and c. Now, let's have an example. The sum of 2 and 3 plus 5 is equal to 2 plus the sum of 3 and 5. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, plus 5 is equal to 10, while 2 plus the sum of 3 and 5, which is 8, is also equal to 10. Therefore, both of them has a sum of 10. Now, let's have associative property of multiplication. When you multiply, you can group the numbers in any combination and the result will be the same. We have the product of a and b times c is equal to a times the product of b and c. Here is an example. The product of 3 and 2 times 5 is equal to 3 multiplied to the product of 2 and 5. 3 times 2 is equal to 6 multiplied by 5 is equal to 30, while 3 multiplied to the product of 2 and 5, which is 10, the answer is also 30. Therefore, both of them has a product of 30. Now, we are on the fourth property of the operations on integers, the distributive property. Distributive property states that the product of an integer multiplied to the sum of the two other integers is equal to the sum of the products of the first integer and each of the addends. Remember these keywords distribute or give each one. So here is an example. You are asked by your mother to buy the following list of groceries in the pharmacy. We have two gallons of rubbing alcohol, two boxes of face mask, and two pieces of face shield. When you ask the pharmacist, here is the cost of each item. One gallon of rubbing alcohol costs 500 pesos. One box of face mask costs 150 pesos and one piece of face shield costs 50 pesos. So we have the quantity of each item which is 2, we have to put it outside the parentheses. We have 2 multiplied by rubbing alcohol plus the face mask plus the face shield. Then, substituting the cost of each item, we have 
2 times 500 pesos for the rubbing alcohol plus 150 pesos for the face mask and 50 pesos for the face shield. Then we have to distribute 2 to each of the item. So 2 times 500 plus 2 times 150 plus 2 times 50. So we have 2 times 500 is equal to 1000 plus 2 times 150 is equal to 300 plus 50 times 2 is equal to 100. Therefore, we have a sum of 1000 plus 300 plus 100 which is equal to 1400 the total or the worth of groceries. Now let us have some further examples. For addition, we have A times the sum of B and C is equal to A times B plus A times C. We have negative 2 times the sum of 3 and 4 is equal to negative 2 times 3 plus negative 2 times 4. Negative 2 times the sum of 3 and 4, which is 7, is equal to negative 2 times 3 is equal to negative 6 plus negative 2 times 4 is equal to negative 8. Now, negative 2 times 7 is equal to negative 14, while negative 6 plus negative 8 is also equal to negative 14. As you can see, both of them resulted to negative 14, which is equal. Now, let's proceed to subtraction. We have A times the difference of B and C is equal to A times B minus A times C. We have 4 times the difference of 5 and 2 is equal to 4 times 5 minus 4 times 2. 4 times the difference of 5 and 2, which is equal to 3, is equal to 12. While on the other hand, 4 times 5 is equal to 20 minus 4 times 2, which is 8. We have 20 minus 8 is also equal to 12. Both of them resulted to 12, which is equal. Now, let's move on to the next property, the identity property. Identity property states that the sum or product of an integer and its additive or multiplicative identity is equal to the integer itself. Therefore, 0 is the identity element of addition and 1 is the identity element of multiplication for an integer. Remember these keywords, self or sameness. Let us have an example. 3 plus 0 is equal to 3. 3 remains 3 when added to 0. Now for multiplication, we have 8 times 1 is equal to 8. 8 remains 8 when multiplied by 1. Now, we are in the last property of the operation on integers, the inverse property. Inverse property states that the sum or product of an integer and its additive or multiplicative inverse is equal to the identity element of addition or multiplication. Remember these keywords, opposite or reverse for additive inverse and reciprocal for multiplicative inverse. To further explain, here are some examples. For inverse property of addition, we have 6 plus negative 6 is equal to 0. Negative 6 is the opposite of positive 6. For inverse property of multiplication, we have 5 times 1 fifth is equal to 1. 1 fifth is the reciprocal of 5. So, to sum up, what are the properties of the operations on integers? Right. The properties of the operations on integers are closure, commutative, associative, distributive, identity, and inverse. Why do you think it is important to learn the different properties of integers? Right. Integers help in computing the efficiency in positive or negative numbers in almost every field. It lets us know the position where one is standing. It also helps to calculate how more or less measures to be taken for achieving better result. In other words, positive integers show goodness, happiness, togetherness, and well-being.
while negative integers show dullness, sadness, low feeling, or etc. Therefore, numbers show feelings or emotions in life. However, despite the negativity that we must have felt right now, especially in this time of pandemic, despite how difficult things are, we must still be optimistic and trust God for all times, for this is just a challenge for all of us. We must still be resilient in enduring and coping up these challenges in life because every problem has always a solution. So to check if you have learned something from our discussion, kindly answer the following activity. All you have to do is to rewrite the given expression using the indicative property by supplying the missing term. You have there an example, 2 times the sum of 4 and 5 is equal to 2 times 4 plus blank. So using the distributive property, the answer is 2 times 5. I will give you 30 seconds to answer. So let's check. So did you get the correct answers? Very good. Now, to further assess your knowledge, let us have a short quiz. All you have to do is to identify the property that justifies each statement. I will give you 30 seconds to answer. <music> Time is up. Let us check your answers. So, did you get the correct answers? Very good. So, that would be all for today's lesson. Thank you for listening and for your cooperation. God bless everyone. Goodbye, class, and keep safe.